What's up people, my name's Sean Reynolds, welcome back to the Ditto Music Channel. Today we're talking about music managers, whether or not you need one, what they actually do, and most importantly, how you can find one. Roll the title! But first things first, if you're watching this video then I'm pretty sure you're a music maker and if that's the case, consider Ditto for your distribution. Not only do you get to keep 100% of royalties earned from your music, you also get a 30 day free trial to try everything out before you buy it. And while I've got you, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and if you've got any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So. The big question is, do you need a music manager? And in its simplest form, if you are terrible at doing everything other than make the music itself, you might want to consider getting a manager. Put it this way, when you're an artist or producer or musician, there are so many plates that you need to spin all at once that it can get in the way of you actually making music. If you can bring someone on board that can help you spin a few of those plates, then the chances are you might be able to progress a lot quicker. For example, a manager could help you with social media marketing, booking your shows and support slots, planning releases, setting up writing sessions and studio time, looking for label and publishing deals, helping with merch and other revenue streams, and pretty much whatever else your lack of organizational skills might need. Of course, the stage you're at in your music career can also determine whether or not you need a music manager. So if you're only just starting out and you're currently able to cover all your bases, I'd say it's not 100% necessary that you race towards hiring a manager. But if you are a little bit further along and you're realizing that everything's getting overwhelming, there's plates crashing down all around you and you need some help, then let's talk about how you can find the right person. Now, in my experience, the availability of managers is never a problem. The problem comes in when they don't have the same goals as you. So finding someone that not only loves your music, but understands where you're trying to get to and what you're trying to achieve is extremely important. You could say that in 2023, we're blessed with the internet. We have unlimited access to information. We can find pretty much anybody that we want to online. I guess you could also argue that the internet is a curse for the exact same reasons, but for the purposes of this video, let's go with the good stuff. Artist managers are likely to be on social media. So do some research, find out who manages artists that you like. Even better, find out who manages artists that make similar music to you. And nine times out of 10, it'll be fairly easy to find their direct email address. So shoot them over an email, introducing yourself, give a few track examples and any highlights of your career so far. Basically, start the conversation with as many prospective managers as you can, even if they're just gonna give you some feedback because it's all helpful. And then, even if they don't think you're currently ready for their input, you will be on their radar. So if they see you popping up on social media in the future, they'll remember you and they will already have your email. Another great online avenue is forum. Places like Reddit, Discord, anywhere that you can talk to a group of people is a potential hiding place for a music manager. So hunt around for forums that are specifically related to the kind of music that you want to make. There's a high chance the right people will find your music, especially if you're promoting it to a really targeted audience. But in your search for the right person, remember that you're going to be spending a hell of a lot of time with this person. And don't sign up to something with someone that you don't enjoy the company of just because you think they're a good manager. Which is why it can be much more beneficial to meet a potential manager face to face. And the way that you do that is with the age old music industry tradition of networking. Networking has kind of become a buzzword over recent years, but in the music industry it is probably one of the most important things you can do. Because in my experience and the experience of many of my colleagues and friends in the industry, who you know can have a huge impact on the trajectory of your career. So get yourself out there. There are hundreds if not thousands of these events being held all over the world every single year, some of which are free to attend. Another great option that's worked for some of the biggest artists on the planet like Drake, Rihanna, Katy Perry is hiring someone that's already close to you to take over some of the important roles within your business. Business. This works on various levels. You already have a relationship with this person, which means the trust is already there. On top of this, the most supportive people in your life can be your friends and family, and they will believe in your music as much as you do. So if you're lucky enough to have someone like this in your life already, consider asking them the question and see if it's something they might be interested in. Both doing your research online and meeting people in person are both great ways to find a prospective manager. However, 
Let's not forget that the music can just speak for itself. What I mean is if you put your efforts into making great quality music, it'll attract an audience and then in turn attract management. So just riding solo for a while and letting the music do its thing organically can sometimes be the best move. But however you go about acquiring your new manager, you need to be constantly aware that they're doing things with your best interest in mind. As I've mentioned already, music management is not a one size fits all kind of business. You need to have the connection that's gonna stand the test of time. And if it's not working for you, you need to be able to say goodbye to this manager and get someone new in who could do a better job. I once knew an artist that had been with the same manager for their entire career and the manager never really came through with any of their promises, but they're still with them today. That is a classic example of just sticking by someone because you've built a friendship when actually they're probably not doing your business any good. So as the artist, this is your creative endeavor. This is your business. You need to make sure this is working for you above all else. So with that being said, let's take a quick look at artist management agreements and some things you should look out for. In my experience, the initial term of an artist management deal will run between three and five years from the date of signature. Anything over five years, you should probably question why. These agreements can also be relatively vague in terms of the manager's obligations, mainly because it's extremely difficult for the manager to be able to predict what they can achieve within that set term. And even if they're really confident in what they can do, it's highly unlikely that they're gonna to wanna to commit to that in writing. It's now generally accepted that 20% is the accepted commission rate for an artist manager. So that's 20% of your gross, meaning pre-tax income. And one more of the big ones that I think you should look out for is the termination clause. How can you get out of this deal if you need to, if the manager isn't pulling their weight? Now, with all contracts and deals in the music industry, they are very, very complex and very, very, Varied, so I would always seek legal advice before signing anything. Also consider signing up to the Musicians Union where you can get free help on these subjects. So whether you're ready to bring on a music manager now or in the near future, I hope this video has been helpful in making a decision. I'm a big advocate for being independent and staying independent throughout your career, but that doesn't mean that you do things solo. In the early stages, it's really beneficial and actually quite fun to do things on your own. But as you grow, you're gonna need to bring people on. And like with any business, it's difficult to expand without those other team members. So just start to think of your music career as more of a business. You're running an enterprise. At the end of the day, you're selling a product, you're selling your music to the public and you need to bring people on that can help you do that. But because you have these personal connections to your art, you're probably not the right person to be selling it like a product. And that is why by bringing on a manager, you could potentially level up your music and its potential within the industry without compromising your very deep personal connection to it. And just one final thought, I promise when you bring somebody into your musical career and world you are giving a piece of it away a piece of the money you make is going to be going to that person so these decisions need to be carefully thought of if i hadn't made that clear throughout the whole of this video make sure you make these decisions very very carefully and as mentioned before seek legal advice before signing up to anything you're unsure about but anyway thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it hit that thumbs up button consider subscribing to the ditto music channel if you want to see more content like this my name is sean reynolds Peace.